Good afternoon and welcome to the second press conference of the day here at the 2022 TCS London Marathon Race HQ and here with our elite wheelchair athletes. Sunday's race is due to be the richest wheelchair race in history and we have a field fitting for that occasion with the very best wheelchair races in the world here in London and we have four of them joining us on the top table this afternoon. First up, we have the 2018 London Marathon champion, the reigning Paralympic champion and Commonwealth Games champion from Australia, Madison de Rosario. Next, we have a man next to her that is unbeatable at the moment. He is the reigning Paralympic champion. He won here last year in a course record time and comes fresh from winning the Berlin Marathon at the weekend, Marcel Hoog. Alongside Marcel, his Swiss compatriot, Manuela Shah, the fastest woman in history over the marathon distance, the three-time London Marathon champion, the course record holder, and the winner of the last two Abbott World Marathon Major Series titles. And finally, please welcome the most successful athlete in the London Marathon history, eight times a London Marathon champion, a six-time Paralympic gold medalist. Here, of course, is David Weir. Thank you for joining us. So we have some uh, housekeeping. We have some media in the room. We're delighted to say again from the last couple of years where we had many of our media online. But if we can also ask those media online to keep themselves in full view with their uh, cameras, but also if they can put themselves on mute when they're not asking questions. And uh, we will start with questions from the room for before we move on to our ones on Zoom. But let's start with a question to the top table. How excited and important is it for the new level of prize money for showcasing Paris sport? That's a question for you, David, to start with. Yeah, it's, am it's amazing how, um, how things have changed in the last 20 years. Um, yeah, I'm happy for everything to move forward. It's taken a bit of time and a bit of pressure on certain marathons, but I'm thankful that London is the first to uh, put the prize money up and um, be a benchmark for the rest of the marathons. So, Madison, for yourself as well, is it super exciting seeing that level of support to Parasport? Yeah, this is massive and, and the way it's going to attract so many more athletes is huge. We've been talking about wanting to increase the depth of the, the wheelchair field in the marathon and this is one of the surest ways to do it. It's going to not just get more athletes here, but the development of the sport is going to be so impacted by this. And, and to have the support of the marathons to better build the Paralympic movement like this on a global level is, is incredible and, and I couldn't be, could not feel more privileged to be a part of it. Is that how you feel as well, Manuela? Yeah, exactly. I have nothing more to mention because it's uh, huge and um, if, if you look back uh, where we come from and where we, where we now, it's a huge step toward the right direction and it's a great um, uh, sign towards our sport. And Marcel, for yourself, it's a super exciting time for Paris sport um, and great seeing it, getting the showcase it deserves. Yeah, it's indeed. Um it's great this development to see how it developed the last uh, few years, uh, power sport and uh, now the future. Yeah, it looks really exciting, um, especially for younger athletes. And um, yeah, I'm just very thankful uh, for this development, for this great support, and um, it's very exciting. Superb. So Madison, obviously a few years away from London. Um, due to the pandemic. How excited are you to be back at London for Sunday's race? I'm so excited. This was, London was the first marathon I ever did back in 2013. So it's always exciting to come back. It's, it's an incredible course and the, the way it kind of plays out. You have so many you know, strong women racing together from, from the start. And, and I think my second time doing it, we had a six person finish into the, into the finish line. And so, yeah, no, it's an exciting race and I'm really happy to be back. Well, we're delighted to have you back. So Marcel, you are in phenomenal form at the moment. Um, what's it like to be in the form you're in right now? Pardon? How good does it feel to be in the, the form of your lifetime right now? Oh, it feels, it feels amazing. Um, yeah, to be in, in good form, good shape at the moment is, is great. Um, 
I think since the Paralympics in Tokyo, I'm, I just feel like uh, it's flying. And um, yeah, I take uh, one marathon at a time, uh, try to uh, take, uh, keep my best performance and um, yeah, just enjoy. It's very important to enjoy every, every moment at the moment. Superb. Um, Manuela, obviously being back after some time off with injury, um, how are fitness levels going since your injuries? Yeah, I'm kind of jealous when I hear Marcel talk <laughs> about that feeling of flying and everything feels so easy. Um, it's definitely been a, a lot of work this year and um, a lot of challenges. Um, just so glad I'm sitting here and I'm back and I'm, I could race in Berlin and I did pretty well. And um, I think I'll improve it every marathon um, that I do. Super. Well, we're glad to see you back here as well. And David, obviously multiple London marathons. Um, Will the buzz be the same on Sunday as it was at the start and the middle of your London Marathon career? Yeah, always. Um, London gives me that buzz that no other race does. It's where I started as a young lad, you know, doing a mini marathon. And, you know, to do my first marathon over 20 years ago, it's, it's something special. And I think it's my 20th anniversary of, of my first win in 2002. So... Yeah, it's always special. Um, the crowd is special and, and they cheer you on all the way through. You don't get that in any, any other marathon around the world. Well, again, we're absolutely delighted to have you back on the streets of London again. So um, for our media out on Zoom, if they can put their questions uh, to our panel in the chat function. But we will turn to the media in the room. And I think Tim from Athletics Weekly can kick us off with the first question. I need a knighthood for that, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> like, you said it yourself, you know, 20th anniversary of I mean, your first win. How do you reflect on that longevity, where you are in your career now, to when you first started? Did you believe, like, when you first got into the sport, that you would be where you are today? Or was that a bit of a leap of faith when you first got into the sport? Did you believe, like, when you first got into the sport, you would be here right now talking about 20 years ago, London Marathons? Not really, but when you look at your heroes, like Heinz Fry, and they're still pushing now, um, and one's... Well, over a hundred and something marathons in his career, it does give you a little bit of confidence that you can have a good career and a long career if you stay injury free. I was about to say, if you ever think of the rest of you guys, like outside of the Paralympics, is this the next biggest thing in terms of the money and the representation of what it actually took for you guys in terms of you know, winning this event? You know, that actually just projects out massively. Is this the next best thing after the Paralympics? I would actually say it's pretty equal to the Paralympics. The yeah, Abbott will, yeah. I think it's bigger. Any reason why it's bigger than the I, I think it's one of the only places where Paralympic sport is able to be professional. That's not a luxury that we have across the board in Paralympic sports. And, and even within wheelchair racing, uh, it really is only the marathon circuit. It's only here where we're able to do that. And, and that's why it's so huge. And, and I think the, the platform it provides us and the ability to, to gain sponsors, which then further provides platform and amplifies voice is significant. So the Paralympics isn't at that level in, in every country. I, I'm very lucky in, in Australia, it, it is it is enormous, but that's definitely not the case everywhere. It's definitely a growing movement, whereas here I think we're able to ride on the momentum that the series and the marathons already have, and that I think is what makes it so huge. Yeah, that's great news. Um, you know, most of my academy will be doing the marathon, the mini marathon, and that's where I started. And, um, you know, they don't get many races at that level. So to be part of one of the biggest races in the world um, and doing the mini marathon, it just boosts the numbers of, you know, athletes wanting to do wheelchair racing. And, um, and we've seen that since 2012, but it's only growing each year over here. And um, if you look at the, the guys racing on the track at the moment, We've got some good top wheelchair racers, and that's just because of what happened in 2012. 
Thank you, Tim. I think it leads on to a good question to Marcel. Obviously, you know, David's longevity. Um, you're not going anywhere soon. You've got Daniel coming through as well. Are there any other athletes that we should be looking out for that are be chasing down yourselves uh, in the future? Yeah, I think there are many great athletes, uh, young athletes coming. Uh, we have one here from Japan, Tomoki Suzuki. Uh, I haven't seen him for a long time. So I'm very excited to see him on Sunday. And um, yeah, there are other great athletes from, from around the, the world. And uh, it's always exciting. Superb. We'll be looking out for those names on the, the weekend and into the future as well. Um, back to you, Madison. Um, we touched upon it, obviously, you know, having won here in 2018 and, um, you know, obviously uh, not able to make it here um, because of the pandemic. How tough was that period for some of the Australian athletes where, you know, there were travel restrictions and uh, potentially, obviously, you know, training uh, restrictions back home as well? How did you manage that um, in relation to training and, and competition as well in that period? It was, yeah, it was definitely a challenge and one that I think took us a long time to work out how to really kind of navigate. Um, in terms of not being able to travel for, for racing, that, that was hard to kind of sit at home and, and watch it all happen knowing you were in form and, and able to do it. I think especially coming out of Paralympics, um, watching kind of Berlin and, and Chicago and Boston happen and not be able to get there just because of our travel was really challenging. Um, I think the other big thing was just being so out of race practice and that was really hard. I think that you take that for granted because we travel and we race so much that you you kind of, you feel sharp, you know how to do it and, and I think, yeah, lining up in, in Tokyo after not racing for two years definitely felt um, a little bit rusty and still am um, to a degree. So, yeah, the, the impact of that's definitely still there a little bit. But, yeah, that was probably the biggest challenge was just kind of being so far out of race practice and, and the things that you normally just come so naturally and you take for granted. So it must have been even more exciting than to be back at the Commonwealth Games and, uh, yeah, obviously ready for London on Sunday yeah no definitely I think at the moment you know I think every race we line up for is so exciting because you kind of know what it's like to be you know not be not being able to to be there for it so yeah definitely not taking that for granted again anytime soon superb I think we can uh, go to our first of our media on zoom and I think we've got Mike Robottom hi there yes um, it's a question for David I'm sorry to bring it up David but Birmingham as Madison just mentioned there um, is that lightning striking and uh, is that really the only time that happens? Are you free of that now and have you managed to get So I think Mike's internet was cut out there but I think you got the first part of the question obviously what happened in uh, Berlin with the Commonwealth Games with the puncher how, how you know likely and often does that happen in training or um, It's very rare for me. I think the last time I had a puncher in, in a race was 2010, the London Marathon. So um, I was debating to take a spare for, for two weeks going into the Commonwealth Games, and um, I never do take a spare. And I do now um, after what happened. Um, but it's just one of those things, and it's very rare. And I, I've probably, in the last five years, I've had one puncher in training. So. You know, it's just one of those things that happen on the day. Um, it, whatever I hit, it definitely exploded and took my tire off and stuff. So, but you, you get over it, and yeah, you're a bit frustrated afterwards and stuff. It was probably, in my eyes, probably the last opportunity to win a medal um, for my country. So, you know, I'm getting on now, and I'm 43. So it was, it was disappointing, but you know, John got a gold medal for the country so I was a bit I was happy for him and on, on the day um, but you bounce back from it and um, I've done well in, in, in you know Berlin on Sunday so I was happy with that result bit of extra fire bit of extra kind of uh, uh, kind of determination in training over the last few weeks because of that yeah definitely um, it spurred me on a little bit more I actually had to go on a stag do after that so it um, <laughs> it, um, it it definitely helped, I think, going out on the, on, on the stag in, in Birmingham uh, just before my wedding. So, yeah, if I didn't have that, I'd probably been dwelling on it for a, a, a long period. But, um, yeah, it was it's just one of those things. I'm, I'm one of these guys that just gets over it and just moves on to the next race, to be honest. Superb. Uh, let's turn to, uh, I think, Danny Coyle. Dan Danny, are you there?
Danny, can Danny you Coyle. Me? I think we can hear you. Yeah, great. Um, I'd just like to, it was great to hear the athletes talking about how the Abbott World Marathon Majors has given them a, a great platform. Um, and then the news yesterday um, was that the series will be awarding equal prize money to able-bodied and wheelchair athletes for the Abbott World Marathon Majors series and increasing that prize pot to go five deep. Um, so I just wonder if we could get a, a, a kind of reaction from, from each of the athletes up there um, to that news. And like I said before, it's, it's huge. And um, every time I hear such news, it's like overwhelming. And it's like, oh my God, is this really happening? Because yeah, like we started, it's, it's it, it was just for racing, and now we actually are able to to do it, do it as a professional athletes, and it's really important to have that and to push the sport. David, obviously, having you know been around not at the beginning, but uh, you know towards <coughs> there, um, did you envision it, you know back then you know having this um, kind of support, or would, you know, was that something you hoped would happen? You always have dreams about it, um, and. When you see other athletes doing winning races and you're not getting the same publicity or prize money, it it's quite um, sad, really. Uh, so when I first won the London Marathon in 2002, I thought I was going to make it as sponsors will be ringing me up, um, prize money will get better, and nothing happened. You know, I was waiting for the phone calls, I was waiting for this, and um, you never think it's going to happen. And... You know, now I've got a bit of a platform where I can, you know, speak about it and talk to the organisers and speak to London Marathon and um, because I've done it for so many years and, and it's nice that they're actually listening to us and it's just nice to be on equal pars as the best um, marathon runners in the world. And Marcel, for yourself, you know, a good time to be in great shape um, but obviously, you know, with the, you know, the Abbott you know, World Series as well, and you know, racing on a you know, Sunday and then coming back the next uh, week to race again. Is, is that part of the motivation as well? I, you know, being that, you know, that there's a, a good financial support behind you? Um, definitely, yeah. I think uh, for us as a professional athlete, uh, the financial support is, is uh, very important. And I think um, the news uh, we got is, is huge, as we heard. I think it's a very important sign uh, not only for for the world of sport, it's also important for for outside for of the sports world, and um, yeah, I think it's it's very very important and um, yeah, for for me as well, it's like a, a dream come true as a as a child when I started with sport, uh, I was dreaming of like having this support and uh, yeah, now we have it and. So really, I'm really uh, thankful. And Madison, for yourself, you know, in Australia for up and coming, you know, para athletes, you know, there's obviously a huge commitment, you know, for travel, for competitions, um, and, and a cost element. Do you think obviously the extra support that's going to help, you know, not just you know inspire, but you know, give uh, athletes an understanding that there's a, a real career out there in para sport. Absolutely, and and I think more importantly is is what Marcel was saying in in how this actually has impact outside of sport, and and this is obviously incredible for us as as athletes who get to line up and and you know be able to race professionally, you know selfishly that's that's incredible. But I think sport has it, it's such a pervasive industry, and the impact that sport has on communities is enormous, and that's why so many of us buy in to the extent that we do. And so you know the the, the Paralympics and, and the Paralympic movement is the largest platform afforded to not just athletes but people with disabilities globally. And so the message this delivers and how we value the, that equality between our disabled and our non-disabled, not just athletes, but, but humans, is, is incredible. So the message this sends is massive and the way it's going to change the way we value individuals and, and communities. And, and you know, 15% of, of the global population is made up by people with disabilities and sport is so huge that the, the message this sends and the impact this has is, is massive. And I couldn't be more grateful to, to the marathons, but the series and to, and to Abbott overall for, for what this actually means and what this does. Thank you. So I don't think we've got any more questions online. We'll just check if there's any more questions from the media in the room. 
So you four have been absolutely fantastic. Thank you for joining us uh, this afternoon for the uh, wheelchair uh, elite pr um, press conference here at Rates HQ. We're delighted and look forward to seeing you for Sunday's TCS London Marathon that starts at 8.50 and uh, it looks like to be an absolute thriller. Um, so we remind you that our next press conference is tomorrow at 10.30 with our elite men. But thank you again to our top four on the top table.